Hi, this is Eileen Slatko. I'm CEO of DSS Consulting, and on behalf of my CPE, I'm here to talk to you today about several of the key components contained in the new Secure 2.0 Act as part of the omnibus bill. Um, very quickly, as sort of a preamble, before I get into some of the aspects of this, Omnibus bill is 4,155 pages. The Secure 2.0 Act is 350 of those pages. There are 100 provisions dealing with Secure 2.0 in the retirement area. So clearly, I'm not going to get into all of those. There are a number of provisions that talk about uh, that are specific to administrators or behind the scenes dealing with the government reporting requirements or very specific situations. So what I'm going to do is address the more basic, the more broadly applicable parts of the act uh, over the next 10 minutes or so. Um, a couple of other things. One is most of the provisions that I'll mention here are not immediately available. So this allows you time to talk to your clients. It allows your clients time to prepare for what's coming. Many of them start after 2023, after 2024. Some are rolled out even longer term than that. Uh, as we'll discuss when we get to RMDs. So, um, and then one other thing, sorry, before I explain to you how I've set this up. Um, the government used several studies and I, I would say sort of some well-known facets of um, our being humans here in the United States. And that is that we tend not to save enough soon enough, whether it's for emergency savings or whether it's for retirement. Um, and we know that there's a component of people now that have massive student debt that is preventing them from participating and being able to save it all while they're trying to clear that up. So um, the, the Act, Secure 2.0 Act, does address those items and allows for more fuller participation at all ends of the spectrum, both age-wise as well as there are pieces that are designed for uh, low to mid-income folks. Um, studies have shown, by the way, that one of the components that I'll talk about in just a minute has been responsible for, in, in test studies, has been responsible for eradicating any racial disparity in um, participation rates when it comes to retirement. So I think the government has done a good job, maybe not perfect, but they've done a good job in rolling out what's in the 2.0 Act. So what I've done here is I've set this up sort of on a timeline uh, of, of age of the participant, um, age of the citizen and what they might be able to participate in um, under the new 2.0 Act. Obviously I've made some um, generalizations here. But the first thing I wanna talk about in terms of important characteristics under Secure 2.0 is that uh, student debt now, repayments of that, uh, student debt on an ongoing basis can be used to receive matching funds in a 401k or 403b. So um, people who are burdened with student debt uh, don't have to make an either or choice paying the student loan back or saving for retirement. They get credit for paying for retirement, paying for the student loan uh, debt, as well as being able to receive a match for that from employers. Um, there is the auto enrollment feature in retirement accounts. There's also an auto enrollment feature for savings, uh, emergency savings. So both of those things are great. It used to be we had for retirement, uh, we had an opt-in. So when you joined um, an employer, whether it was private or government, you were able to opt in to a program. Now, most of the places have, uh, most employers will be able to offer or will be offering opt out programs. Um, and so an employee can always opt out of something, but in the absence of doing so, they will be enrolled 
into the plan. What we know as financial advisors and people working in the financial field, we know that uh, once that money is gone, people generally don't miss it. So this is a good thing, I believe. Um, part of that under Secure 2.0 is that employers can now make those matching contributions into Roth funds, which they have not previously made previously been able to do previously, any employer match would go into the traditional side of the account, even if the employee had chosen all of their um, retirement uh, funds to go into Roth side of the house. So that's good. Now, employers can make Roth contributions as well in their matching. Uh, the emergency savings, again, is going to be auto enroll. Uh, there are specifics here that I'm not going to get into, but these are all things that are coming down the pike, going to be rolled out within the next couple of years. So again, good time to begin to talk to clients about preparing for this. Uh, one of the things that some people may be concerned about uh, as they progress, as their children get older, if they've been diligent at saving in 529 plans, they begin to look at those funds as, you know, how can we spend them in a way that will allow us to take the 529 money without getting um you know, incurring any penalties. The government in Secure 2.0 is now saying over a period of years. And subject to your the annual contribution limits, 529 uh, plans, funds can be rolled into Roth accounts, again, subjected to annual contribution limits and, and other specifics. But that's really good news, too. So that, again, uh, can allow younger parents uh, or parents of younger children to uh, or grandparents to put money into uh, their 529 plans and then not worry about all of that being lost if for some reason the child doesn't utilize those, those monies. Um, next on the timeline here, uh, if someone has gotten back into the workforce or has always been a part-time worker, those rules have changed allowing part-time workers an earlier access to 401k and 403b plans that used to be three years. Now they can be part-time only two years. Again, specifics here in terms of number of hours, of course, but that does allow part-time workers to uh, save for retirement sooner than they would have otherwise been able to do. Again, moving uh, through someone's life, um, catch-up contributions. We know those start once you hit 50, now for those people who are 60 and over, the catch-up contributions are increasing. They're increasing up to $10,000 a year. There's a formula there. They, at some point over the next several years, they will begin to just be indexed for inflation. So if we have um, continued or additional bouts of really high inflation, then those catch-up contributions will reflect that um, as opposed to just a regular step up that's listed in the act now. At the very end of our time frame here is looking at what happens to RMDs. You've probably heard this is one of the more popular things right now that's being talked about. RMDs, the age for those required minimum distributions is increasing. It's increasing over a period of years. It's increasing based on how old you are as of a certain date, but it will increase from 72 when you are required to take those distributions to 73, then 74, last 75 listed so far in the Secure 2.0 Act. Additionally, if someone does not take an RMD, if they've forgotten to take an RMD or they haven't taken enough, you know that there is a huge, up till this point, there has been a 50% um, penalty assessed on the not taking the full or any RMD. That has now dropped to 25% as written in the act and with you know prompt, um, prompt catch up of taking that RMD, 
uh, then that drops even further to just 10%. Again, all of these things will be rolled out over a period of years. So very little that's contained in Secure 2.0 is immediately um, in is immediate uh, in its implication for how retirement plans are handled or for how the emergency savings, but it does allow you and your clients, whether they're individuals or businesses, to prepare for what's coming and to put uh, all of the newer plans into, into place. I hope this has at least given you a taste of what's contained in the Secure 2.0 Act. I hope to see you um, soon on a webinar that goes into this in more detail. Thanks. Bye.